Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be unboxing the Bitax Hex, I think it's called that. So there's an Ultra Hex and a Super Hex. This comes from Tiny Chip Hub. So if you want to get one of these, I think I have a discount code for 5% in the description below if you wanted to get one. But we're going to be unboxing it and setting it up and then there'll be some videos later on for overclocking and stuff like that that we'll do on this. So shout out to Tiny Chip Hub for sending it over. And we also got a Zyber 9, which will be uploading the unboxing for that later on as well. Maybe in a couple of days. So let's get this open up and see how it comes. So I know you can't really see the full screen of it right now, but I'm just going to take it out of the box every single part and then we'll lay it out on the desk. So it comes with wires. This is obviously the plug. It comes with a little Bitcoin coin as well if you ever want one of those. And then it comes, I believe that this is the Wi-Fi router. And then this thing by here is actually the Bitax Hex. So let's grab that out as well. So here we have the Bitax Hex. So it says, acrylic is fragile, handle with care, right there. Let's get it centered. And then it came with the power plug and then the cord for the power plug, the Wi-Fi, which I believe goes right here. So, so if you see that right there, that's where it goes. Oh, sorry, it's right here. And then the power is there. And that's pretty much it. That's all you get in there. So today we are going to be, let's just take these off and put them somewhere else. You can see here that it has the tiny chip hub branding on it right there. So on the fans, if you spin that around there. And I think you can get them from other places as well. It is open source. So the hex is the open sourced version. So there's an ultra and a super hex. So what you have in here is six chips below it. And these are going to be the ones from the super, whatever that is. So even I think in the future, there's going to be ones kind of like the nerd QX where it has the updated chips in it. And that's probably what we're going to see. So six updated S21 chips within here. So this is actually very well put together when you're looking at it sideways. Spaces that are keeping the two acrylics. You know, normally with the bit axe, if you've seen previous videos, you'll know that we have all of our bit axes kind of on stands like this. So we can basically take them off and place them places. So the airflow goes under. I think kind of the same thing is going on here. They even have spaces on the bottom. So you can flow air through there, or at least air does flow through there. And then on the bottom as well, you have, you know, little slits to let air flow through. So overall, pretty good or well put together machine. I don't really know if this fan is going to be doing too much because the heat sink is right here. I would expect it to be just one massive fan on the heat sink that you have here. But two fans, I guess you cool in the voltage regulator. If we kind of look in there, I believe you can see a voltage regulator. That's the screen there. So it's interesting to see because the screen is there, but you can't really see the screen necessarily if it's in there because the fan is on top. But I like the fact that it has all of this kind of in placement already done so that you don't actually have to you know, kind of find a place or do some 3D printed parts that would actually hold it in place. So as I said, I believe the internet just goes in here. So let's screw that on. And it's going to work the same way as a Bitax setup, I believe. Normally, you know, with like the nerd QX that we had, that was the same setup. You just type in the IP address and then give it an internet password. I believe that these run on the XOS as well, but we'll have to find out. I don't know what OS the Zyber 9 or Zyber 8, sorry, has on that. So we'll have to discover that in the next video. But for now, we are going to have to plug this in. So overall, I believe that this can do four terahash with six chips underneath there. I don't know if there's going to be any upgrading kind of going on. You know how you have the customization with the bit axe with different heat sinks. And even with the Nerd QX that we have over there, there is a little bit of customization that you have. But for the most part, these are pretty put together already. You can kind of see, you know, 
it would take a lot to take all of this off and put a bigger fan on there for pretty much no reason because it's all done for you. So yeah, I don't think we'll be upgrading this. This is probably just going to be, you know, left on in the background. The overclocking, I'm sure that there's a limit with these fans that you have. I don't know how loud they're going to be. Maybe we could upgrade them to Nocta fans in the future just to keep it a little bit quieter. And I think that's about it in terms of the overall miner. So we're going to be putting it obviously solo Bitcoin mining. Currently the farm is at, I think, 15 terahash. So this might add an extra four to five terahash to the whole farm. And that hopefully brings us up to around 20 terahash. And then we do have the Zyber 8, which is going to be coming in a different video, which should take it up to 25 terahash overall. So I know technically it's not the most efficient way to mine everything if you have different varieties of bit axes you might as well buy an asic miner at that point but more on the channel we're talking about the technology and the open source nature of a lot of these things so reviewing them and showing you guys kind of what they're capable of on their own is a good introduction into solo mining bitcoin or at least mining bitcoin and that hopefully decentralizes the hash rate quite a lot on the network because that's the main problem that these are made to solve. So if we can hit more blocks on the network, solar mining, then obviously that's going to decentralize the network a lot more. Now, do I think that I'm going to solo mine a block? Definitely not. I don't have enough hash rate. The odds are still very, very low. Even with this, I think the odds at four tera hash is probably going to be around 5,000 years. So one in every 5,000 years, if you left it mining, you might hit a block on one of these. As I said, it also has older generation chips in it, and that is gonna be a lower hash rate. One thing that Tiny Chip Hub did say to me about the actual chips underneath is that they were bought from miners which they have warranty on. So I thought that was very interesting because having warranty on the chips at least, I know you void the warranty when you open it up, but so a lot of these Chinese manufacturers, I believe, are using discarded chips in their miners, like the bit axes from AliExpress. They're using discarded chips or old ones that were used in older miners. But I believe that these ones are from not new ASICs necessarily, but ones that have warranty on the actual chips. So they haven't been actually used or opened up before. So now let's head into the setup. So first thing we need to do is actually put the power cable into there. So it's very interesting how it puts it on the top there. So that should be it there. And then we just need to take this off and then plug it into the power supply. So when we're talking about the power supply, this is what we have. You have 120 watts. I don't know what the maximum is. We're going to have to see when we spin it up what the kind of uh, natural wattage is on it. And then it is a 12 volt wattage system. So over time, we've kind of seen this migration over to 12 volt, I think. The bit axes are also going to go over to 12 volt at some point. These bigger machines require 12 volt. You can see it with the new QX, even with the Avalon Nano 3S, that requires 12 volt. And also so does this and the Zyber 8 that we have as well. So I think on the channel, we're going to be migrating over to a 12 volt power supply just to supply all of these without having to, you know, connect each one, because currently we have a new QX a Avalon Nano, and then it's going to be this one plugged into an extension lead, which isn't great. So I'd want one power supply to power them all. So in the future, there might be an upgrade for that. But let's get this plugged in and turned on. Let's just plug it in here. I'm assuming you can use any kind of power supply. Oh, there we go, turned on. But you would uh, want to probably go with the one that's recommended. So it looks to be spinning up now. And you can kind of see down in there, if we lift it up here, you can kind of see down in there, the screen is on right there. So it's the same setup as a BitX where you go through the IP and then you have to actually put it up onto the computer. So I think what we'll do is we'll do that through our phone because I think that's easier actually to do it through your phone. All you have to do if you've never set up one of these before is actually go onto your Wi-Fi and connect into, it will normally be named like BitAxe something. I'm sure that this one's called BitAxe Hex. Once you're in the Wi-Fi, 
you want to go to the settings and then you want to click on the Wi-Fi name, put in your Wi-Fi name or SSID, I think that's what it's called, and then put in your Wi-Fi password, click save and then restart. And you should be able to access it on your computer by typing in the IP address, which is displayed on the screen here. So I think now let's go and do that. And then we'll head over to the computer screen and kind of show you what we're working with on this, kind of what the hash rates are and connecting it to the pool. And then we'll give you an overall view of the whole pool so far. So let's get over to that now. So here we are on the dashboard and it's been running for a little bit, as you can see there. Currently the hash rate is at 2.91. The average is 2.96 and expected is 3.08. Efficiency is slightly less than expected. So we're slightly more efficient. And the average is 19.1 joules per terahash. And then you have the shares here. So 165. 19 above target and one stale. I know a lot of people have been asking what above target means, so I also don't know. If somebody can let me know in the comments what that actually means, then that would be great, thanks. And then we come down here, we have the power output. So 56 watts, 55 watts. I think for the amount of chips that are actually in there, you can get a better deal by buying one of these than buying six of the chip versions just the single bit axe versions. So these are based on the Ultra, I believe. And if you were to buy six of them, it probably cost you $600. And these cost around $400. And they're also slightly more efficient in terms of the power draw, just because they're all encapsulated together. And on a 12 volt system that you see here, ASIC frequency, this is currently at the max ASIC frequency without inspecting the element. And then the voltage is at 1 to 50. Temperature is actually very low. So I expect this to go up to maybe 45 in the future when we start overclocking it. And then the voltage regulator is at 56. Fan speed is at 38%. So that can definitely go a little bit higher in the future. And that's about it for all of the stats that we're seeing here. So there is also a different version, which is the Super Hex and that can do 4.2 terahash, and that is using the Supra chips, which I believe are S19, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, and the ones that are on the hex currently that we're using is from an S17, I believe. So this one can do 4.2 terahash running at 90 watts, and the efficiency is kind of the same as what you'd see on a Supra as well. But we are currently using the hex version, which is the original version for three terahash plus solo Bitcoin miner. So you can get these for $500. As I said, you can use the code Sterling if you want to get 5% off this, I believe. And we're looking at three terahash with 19 watts per terahash. If we go here, we are slightly below that. So average is 18.89. Expected is actually 18.22 for the expected efficiency. So slightly more efficient than what it's listed as. The hash rate is pretty much bang on the expected in terms of the average and expected there. When it comes to the pool settings, we have it currently pointed at EU solo CK pool and the stratum and port. Well, it's just the quadruple three. We have our address here and we just set the password to zero. You can set a difficulty, but I think that the difficulty is fine for zero. When we look at the logs, you kind of see you're hitting a very high difficulty or at least above a thousand. So it says here that it's set to 1,606. So maybe it's variable difficulty for that. But just looking here, we're seeing a lot of submitted shares as we kind of go through time. So we decided to migrate over to EU solo CK pool. There is the North American version, which is just CK pool, but we're using the EU one. I think that it's good kind of just to switch around the pools. I don't really think that obviously it doesn't really matter what pool you're on as long as you have a good connection to it. So you can still solo mine to any pool, but we've got them pointed at various different pools with the hope that one of them hits a block on that pool. 
There's also been a lot of new pools popping up for solo mining, so that's good to see. And it kind of furthers the decentralization of the solo mining. So we also have from Tiny Chip Hub as well, if we scroll down here, the Zyber 8, which is right here. And that has a performance of 6.4, which we'll be reviewing in a couple of days, I think. And that has eight ASIC chips with 6.4 terahash running at 140 watts. So we're going to have to see kind of how that compares. Maybe we'll do a comparison video. We'll definitely be doing an overclocking video for this coming in the future. See how far you can actually push this and see how bad the efficiency is. I'm assuming that this is the best efficiency that you can get right here. And then from there, I think we might do a comparison. This versus the Nerd QX++. And maybe we'll do a three comparison as well of all three of them because they are slightly comparable. This hex that we have now is kind of an older version, but we could do a comparison between this and our other rig of bit axes. So six bit axes versus the one hex bit axe that we have here. But you can see even the hash rate does kind of climb up to certain kind of into the four tera hash range sometimes maybe. So we can definitely push it past four and I'm hoping in the overclocking video we can push it to five, but that is very hopeful for this miner. As I said, we got it pointed to here on solo CK pool and we don't actually have it named. So maybe we should go in and change that. We should probably name all of our miners at this point because it will help us separate and see which ones are actually hitting the best share. But currently our odds of finding a block is 0.063% in a year. So we're not even close to finding a block basically. And the hash rate over the past seven days has only been 10 tera hash. Total shares, best share is 2.76G. Hopefully we'll see a higher one than that very soon in the future once we've added a bit more hash rate to the pool. So that's kind of my review and unboxing of the Bitax Hex. Let me know if you want to see any videos, if you want me to do anything with this, and then kind of just let me know in the comments what videos you want to see later on down the future, or if there's any other hardware that you want me to get a hold of and review, I can make arrangements to try to get some of them. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.